So I'm so excited for everyone, and I'm just excited that we're today we're learning from the best. So let me introduce our speaker. Ardi Roberto is a best-selling author, award-winning entrepreneur, sought-after speaker, and international award-winning seminar producer. OMF Literature published his best-selling booklet, Ang Buhay na Hindi Bitin, How to Live Life Content, Blessed and Worry-Free, now on its 12th printing with over 500,000 copies sold and printed. Ardi's inspirational book, The Heart of Healing, was given a prestigious Gintong Aklat finalist award by the National Book Development Board of the Philippines in 2010. In 2011, his book on personal finance, Ang Pera na Hindi Bitin, Money That Is Never Short, was National Bookstore's number one bestseller for five months. Ardi's latest book, Real Men Are Pogi, Pure, Obedient, Gentle, and Intense, how to be Handsome in God's Eyes was also a National Bookstore's bestseller list, top five in 2013. Ayan. So, gano ba kapogi si R.D.? Sobrang pogi that he landed a former beauty queen. Okay. Speaking with him today uh, is Mrs. Miriam Kiambao Roberto. We all know Miriam. In my book, she was the 1999 Miss Universe. <laughs> And apart from that, she's also an actress, a uh, TV personality. Um, but uh, she has devoted her time uh, to be uh, move, more focused on her personal life and being the lovely wife to R.I.D. So without further ado, let us welcome our brother and sister in Christ, servants of the Lord, Mrs. R.D. Roberto, ah, Mr. R.D. Roberto and Mrs. Miriam Kembao Roberto. Again. Good, morning. good morning. Wow, it's really good to be here. This morning, as I um, we woke up around six o'clock, Miriam and I, and I was telling Miriam, babe, is it okay if we just sleep in and you know uh, not attend the seminar? <laughs> and she reminded me, babe, uh, we can't. We're the speakers. <laughs> we slept at uh, around four o'clock this morning. We were so excited about giving this seminar that uh, we just lost track of time, just rehashing and, and visiting the material again. And it's really true, we're, we're so excited because um, uh, Mira and I just got married. And so this seminar is really like a workshop for us as well in preparation. Yeah. And not only have we uh, are excited to teach, but we're also excited to learn. So we're all going to go on this journey together, all right? Um, I'd like to ask a few questions. Uh, how many of you are attending a seminar on finance or money uh, based on the Bible for the first time? Can you raise your hands? Okay. All right, quite a number. All right, thank you. How many of you are here in CCF Eastwood? I know this was asked, but I didn't see uh, CCF Eastwood for the very first time. Can you raise your hands? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's start. We have a jam-packed half day. As we were going through the material last night, Mir and I were saying, baka pang whole day yata tong seminar na to. So, Pastor Jess, I hope that... Uh... <laughs> no, but we'll try to finish by... 12:15. Okay, we'll follow the schedule. All right. So let's um, let's start. Um, okay. Just feel that. Uh, may I start with a prayer also. Yeah. Okay. Let's bow our heads and and just uh, lift up everything. Uh, just leave all your concerns and and while you're at it, let's let's just put our cell phones on silent. Let's leave all the concerns that we have at home or the office uh, where they belong. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are our God and you are our provider and you have given us everything that we need, Lord. And Lord, today we uh, ask that you give us guidance, we ask that you give us wisdom and uh, Miriam and I ask, Lord Father, that you just, again, as all the speakers say, 
uh, override our preparation as you have last night. Lord Father, may you speak through us and you may speak truth, Lord Father, with love. And we, may we just minister not only um, uh, to the audience here, but also to us. We thank you, Lord Father, for this opportunity to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay, I just want to share my, my joy with you. As mentioned, we, Mary and I just got married a couple of, ah, yesterday was our fourth month monthsary. Yay! Let's give the Lord a big hand. Uh, prior to that, uh, this is, for both of us, this is our second chance at love. I was a widower before. Um, marrying uh, Miriam, and Miriam was uh, was going through the process of divorce. And a week or a few days before uh, our wedding, actually, all the legal documents and uh, for the divorce just pushed through. So it's really amazing how God worked. We have um, a lot of other stories about our love story, but we're not going to talk about that today. So maybe later for lunch, if you want to join us. But I just want to share our joy. So I'll show you a few pictures of how really God blessed us um, during our wedding day. In, preparary, in preparing for our, our marriage, we spent a lot of time talking to each other, uh, going through a book. And I don't know how many of you are engaged or single, but we, there was this book that we went through called 101 Questions to Ask Each Other Before You Get Engaged, right? So we went through that. And a lot of those questions pertain to uh, finance and money. And so we went through, uh, it asked questions like, are you in debt, okay? How much money do you owe? Or uh, how much money do you have in the bank? You know, very straightforward questions. What are your values in terms of money? How do you handle it? What do you, how do you view giving? How do you view investing? And we were just so pleasantly surprised that we had, uh, we were so compatible in terms of our view of managing money, okay? Um, there are, there's, um, there's statistics I say that show, okay, okay, well, I'll just show you some pictures before you go that, okay? That's the honeymoon. Um, tip also, this is not in the, uh, it's an aside tip. If you're planning, who's, who's about to get married or still single? Okay, so instead of getting, uh, what we had, we didn't have a wedding registry. We had a honeymoon registry, okay? Because we were all, we all had microwaves and, you know, and toaster ovens and wall clocks. We didn't want any of that. So we put up a wedding uh, honeymoon registry and we listed down all the trips, the itinerary that we wanted. So this is a tip. And then um, you, you can, on this website called wanderable.com, they can give you and uh, actually give you by paying by credit card uh, portions of each trip. So we listed their trip. We wanted to go to Europe. We wanted to go to Madrid and we wanted to go to Paris, we were, we were going to Phuket. And so, amazingly, God provided through people who were kind enough to click, go on that website and said, okay, we'll take care of your airfare to here and there, or we'll take care of your hotel in Madrid, or we'll take care of your bike tour in Paris, etc., etc. So it's a good way to underwrite your honeymoon, okay? <laughs> there. And of course, we, uh, yeah, so that's in the south. This is in the south of France. And of course, the, uh, this one is in Mon Monaco. Yeah. And of course, you can't leave without, when you go on honeymoon, you can't leave without your trusty happy pod. So before we start, we might forget, we're going to do a, a groupie, a groupie, a selfie, <laughs> selfie groupie. So you can post this later. All right. Gusto niyo ba ng ano, photo o video? <laughs> video na lang para ano, ganun. Okay. So in each place that we would go to, we would actually have a video. We do a 360 video like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Paano yan? Hindi, <laughs> ganito na lang. Sabihin natin. Okay. Uh, welcome to Money and Marriage. Okay, at CCFD's work. Okay. At CCFD's, you ready? Okay. 
Welcome to Money and Marriage at CCF Eastwood. Say hello. Okay, and so our hashtag for today is uh, hashtag money and marriage. You could post questions or comments on our Twitter accounts at rdroberto at Q, and if you want to post anything also on her Instagram, okay? For those of you who are into that. <laughs> All right, so let's start. You know, uh, a lot of us, before we discovered the Bible, would go to a lot of different sources for advice in terms of money, right? And sometimes we get conflicting advice, just like this sign that I saw in China. Can you read that sign? <laughs> Entrance only, do not enter. You, know, you get a lot of conflicting advice uh, in the secular world. The world has um, many, many different opinions about how to handle and manage money. Okay? But today, what we're going, the source that we'll be going to, the go-to source today, will be Scripture or God's Word. And I'm really excited because I want to have a mindset today that you guys are going to hear this for the first time. Because <clears throat> when I heard these principles for the first time, my mind was just really blown away. And it really changed the way I manage money. It really changed my financial um, uh, future. Okay? And uh, it was the same thing for Miriam. Okay? We'll go through the outline. So there will be, I, I divided into three, into three breakthroughs. We'll first go through... A, some attitude tweaking or adjustments, okay? Uh, yes, it's there in your workbook. There's a page there that discusses the outline. So we're going to discuss on what is our attitude towards money. You know, many of you maybe who are in, uh, in debt or, or owe money or wish they had more money are wishing maybe if I had more money, it would solve a lot of my problems. We're going to go through that. Then we're going to discuss and, and define also what is great wealth or what is wealth for you? And if you're with your spouse, we're going to do an exercise. We're going to discuss that as well. Many times we avoid uh, in marriage talking about money because it's very uh, sensitive. You know? And Mary and I are really in the process of doing that. So that's why you also spend so much time. As we were doing this seminar, we were also doing the workshop ourselves. Okay? Uh, the second session, we'll talk about <coughs> stewardship. We're going through a mindset and attitude because that is the foundation of managing your finances, the biblical way. And then the course number three will go through seven steps that I personally went through um, to restore um, my financial standing. Because before I became a Christian, before I accepted the, uh, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I had to go through uh, a trial. I went through a bankruptcy um, not only zero, but deep into debt. And the Lord used that event in my life, that business failure, so that I could, uh, for one, discover him and invite him into my life. And number two, to discover his biblical principles in terms of handling finance. And everything that I'm sharing with you is experiential. Uh, disclosure, I am not a registered financial planner. Uh, in college, I had to retake math a uh, couple of times, okay? Uh, actually, also English, so I'm, a, I'm an author, but I had to also, I went through reme remedial English. So just to disclose, you know, I'm, I'm neither an accountant, a CPA, or a, I don't call myself a financial expert. All I can share with you is what I know and what God did in my life. I only give, uh, give him all the credit to turn around my finances, okay? So we're going to go through, hopefully we can go through all the seven strategies, okay? And it's outlined there in your workbooks. Today is really just a talk or a seminar, and if you go and look at the root word of seminar, it means uh, it's lat it comes from the Latin seminal. Seminal is from the root word, uh, actually semen, which means seed. So today we're going to give you that seed, and what is your part? If we give you the seed, your part is to plant it, water it, cultivate it, and let it grow, all right? So as I mentioned, it's all based on experience, research, and scripture. When I was deep into debt, um, 
I just really dove into God's Word, and I really dove into a lot of books written by Christian authors, like Larry Burkett, who wrote Freedom from Debt. So all of this is based on that. It's also based on uh, another book called Money and Marriage uh, that my late wife, Ting Ting, and I wrote together before she passed away. So those books are actually also available there. Uh, Money and Marriage is usually sold at 220 or 250. Today is only 200. Okay? And uh, Pera na Hibitin, na Hindi Bitin, is only at 50 pesos. And uh, for the singles or the men or women who want their partners to be more bogey and want to know more about our, you know, uh, some of the portions of our love story are here, coming in Miriam. So this one, Real Men Are Pogi, is selling for 100 pesos. Okay? Proceeds go to uh, the Joshua Roberto Scholarship Foundation. <laughs> All right. Okay. So later on, we'll have uh, Miriam join us. Uh, she'll also be facilitating the workshop sessions and questions, and she'll also have her own session uh, after this. Okay. Um, yeah, so the seven principles are based on, on the Pera Nahim Libitin, which landed in the number one. Just want to praise God for an answered prayer when Pera Nahim Libitin came out. I really, I laid hands on the bestseller list in National Bookstore <laughs> and asked God that, Sana Lord, if not my book, there would be a book that's based on your word that would reach the uh, bestseller, bestseller chart. And true enough, a month later, it landed in number eight or five. Then a month later, it landed in number one. And it stayed there for about almost six months before uh, all stocks ran out. And uh, I want to thank my mom. who uh, It sold about 100,000 copies. And um, my mom <laughs> bought about 99,999. <laughs> That's what moms are for, OK? So OK, let's enter. The Bible has, amazingly, 500 verses on prayer, 500 verses on faith, but I was amazed that it has over 2,300 verses on just money and possessions. God knows our heart. The Bible says that uh, the heart is deceitful. Yeah? And God knows the, the inner movings of our mind and our hearts, that he knows that money is so important, uh, and it determines our eternity, actually. Okay? Look at the 10 reasons why married couples fight. If you go through the list quickly, go from number 10 and down to number one. Uh, number 10 is the past, fighting historically, uh, politics. This is in the States, so I think number nine, if in the Philippines, would be about in-laws. Uh, <laughs> number eight is religion. Seven is jealousy, um, uh, priorities, time, intimacy, or sex, children, family, communication, and of course, number one is money. There's a study, if you go to the Huffington Post, that uh, financial arguments, if you argue early enough, early in your marriage, it's an indicator of uh, marital problems and even divorce. Okay? Since we don't have divorce here in the Philippines, it could lead to actually separation. Okay? And uh, studies also show that, like in the States, 50% of marriages end up in divorce, or actually now it's 51%. And 80% of those divorces the main cause or major cause is what? It's money. Why? Because really money magnifies matters of the heart. Money magnifies matters of the heart. Money just reveals the values that you have. And if you and your spouse are not on the same level, you're going to end up arguing. Because money really touches every aspect of your life. And, and I'm really glad that you're here to learn more about how God wants us to handle this resource. There's a saying that money has never changed anyone. It really just what? It just magnifies who you really are. If you were a generous person before you got rich, you're going to be a generous person when you get rich. Okay. And guess what? If you were a miser before you got rich, when you get rich, you're going to be a bigger miser. <laughs> so let's go. Breakthrough number one is knowing great wealth. Okay. Babe, Miriam, can you uh, assist? Let's go through a workbook exercise right away. If you open your workbooks to that page that has uh, the exercise, 
I'd like you and your partner or spouse to define in your own words what wealth is. Okay? And after you define that, don't share the answers, okay? I want a husband and wife or, or a, a fiancé or uh, just to answer it separately. Then once you've answered it, uh, compare and then answer the next question. Based on your definition, do you consider yourself wealthy? So we're going to have two minutes for that. Okay, one minute left. So again, try answering it separately first, husbands and wives, and then compare if you're on the same page. All right, time's up. You can continue writing and then. Okay, Mike, please for Miriam. Yeah, we'll just have some sample answers from the floor. Who would like to share, before I call and point at anyone, who would like to share what their definition for marriage is? Wealth, wealth is. I'm uh, sorry, my definition for wealth. Who would like to share? Raise your hand. Oh. Wala. You get the reward. Oh, they're in the back. Oh. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Okay. Yes, Jan. Well, my definition for wealth is material possession to make life comfortable for me and others. Thank All you, right. Jana. How does that compare to your partners? Ano yung sayo ayon? <laughs> so I have three definitions of wealth. Uh, the first definition is uh, excuse me, material possession. So we have the same okay. uh, love of family and health. So we have very, very similar no, uh, definitions of wealth. Oh, oh. What do you Pero think about kanya, that? Kasamang health, My health and family. And family. Okay. Yung kay Jan, material possessions. Ba? And, and others. And others. Okay. To give away. Okay. And others. Oh, yeah. okay. So thank you. Yan, meron kayong buhay na hindi, hindi bitin. <laughs> Who else would like to share? Yes. Your name, please. Uh, and? Marie, okay. What's your definition, Albert? For me, wealth is um, a sor something that's a source of happiness and contentment that is based from one's own individual perspective. And yes, <laughs> sorry, Marie. Um, being able to know how to handle money properly and be financially free with options and financially secure. So financial security for Marie and source of happiness naman for Albert. Thank you so much. Yeah, meron kayong buhay na hindi bitin. Yan. And then one last, one last sharing. Meron kayong libreng buhay na hindi bitin. Yes. See, Will and and Ron. Magkasawa ba kayo? Okay. So what's your definition, Will? Having things, experiences that make your life meaningful, content, and closer to God. Meaningful, contentment, and closer to God. Ron? Uh, sorry. Wealth is something that you can be proud of, not just physically available, a significant value like family. 
So meaning and value for Will and Ron. Thank you so much. It's so interesting, Ardi, no? How, mm. how different couples view wealth differently. Yeah. Yung isang couple, material possessions. Mm -hmm. Yung isa naman, meaning and, uh, happiness, uh, meaning and value. Yung isa naman is happiness and security. Tsaka experience. And experience. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So yeah. based on that definition, uh, raise of hands please, how many of you would consider yourselves wealthy? Based on your own definition. Okay. Raise of hands please. Okay, about maybe about 70% of the room. All right. So your answers were like, okay, material possessions, source of happiness, health, family, someone mentioned contentment financially, to be financially free and experience. So let's see later on how your answers uh, benchmark against the Bible's definition of great wealth. All right. Let's see. But before that. Question, another question. If you were given only three, 535 million pesos today, would that solve a lot of your problems? Raise, raise of hands. Huh? Ah, kung tax-free, eh. Kayo, kayo naman, nanalo na nga akin ng 500 million, ayaw niyo pa magbayad ng tax. <laughs> o, oh, sabihin na natin tax-free. So, what do you think? Would it, would it solve some problems of yours? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yes, yung iba Sam, yung iba Sam. no. Sam, oh, baka kulang pa. <laughs> sino, sino nagsasabi ng yes, taas sa kamay? Yeah. Ayun. Oo. Oh, oh. Marami. Sino yeah. nagsasabi ng no? No. I isa lang, Kaya, dalawa, isa tatlo. Lang. Tatlo. Lima. Mas siguro, marami kayong utang kaysa 535. Ano, hindi, baka siguro na-experience na nila. Ha? Na-experience na nila na magkaroon ng 500 million. Uy, social! <laughs> Bigay naman kayo sa CCF Eastwood. Yan. Tapos, sino yung nagsagot ng Sam? Taas sa kamay. Ayun. Yeah. O, oh, Sam. Okay. Yeah. Parang mas marami yung yes. Oh, Pinakabarami yeah. yung yes. Actually, honestly, also, me, I would, you know, I would actually think of a lot of things that, that uh, I could do with that. And there are some, actually some people who have encountered that from not having too much money or just being middle class and have experienced that. And, and most of the time, it's through what? It's through the, the Lotto. In November 2010, I took the snapshot of this. The Lotto, I was so tempted <laughs> to bet. Pastor, sorry, Pastor Jesse. Because <laughs> in December, it was about 900 million. I don't know if you remember that. When no one was winning the lotto, it kept on going up and up and up. And that 535 million went all the way up to 900 million. And eventually, someone won it, no, I think, end of December or January. What a way to celebrate the new year, no? But you know what? As I was writing the book, Pera na Hindi Bitin, I came across some research. What if I did win the lotto, you know? I'll give you suggestions how oh. to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, hindi tayo pwede bumili ng ano eh. Ito naman eh. <laughs> but nothing's impossible with God. So who knows? But not through the lotto. Okay. Because let's look at some examples. Uh, here's a lotto winner in the States who won $30 million. Okay. And he said to his uh, siblings, I wish I had never won the lotto. Because all of a sudden, all these unknown friends and relatives, every day would knock on his door, call him from out of nowhere, and he was constantly pressured and barraged for dole outs and balato, 24-7. Okay? His girlfriend, okay, she's there in court because she was identified as the mastermind behind the murder of this lotto winner. A year or two later, he, uh, Abraham Shakespeare, the name of the driver, truck driver who won that lotto, was found murdered and buried in his own backyard. So it solved a lot of his problems. <laughs> Wala na siyang problema. <laughs> okay. And uh, as Pastor Jess mentioned also, there's this, um, um, before I became a Christian, I would always hear, uh, you know, be careful of money. Money is the root of all evil. But hindi, di ba? The Bible says it's what? It's the love of money. And when I first heard this in a retreat, I remember, I said, ah, okay. It's not money pala. Money is not bad per se. It's neutral. But it's the love. It's developing that love 
for money and it becomes more important than God. It more, becomes more important than relationships. And that is a root of all kinds of evil. And a lot of people, it says, Paul was saying to Timothy, some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Yeah. And I've experienced that. Before I became a Christian, my life was really about chasing and accumulating money. And I've experienced grief like no other. Uh, damaged relationships, you know, uh, uh, deception. You know, it's like a, one of Miriam's Telus areas, okay? Going local. This guy who won 80 million pesos, it's not exactly 535 million, but he was featured in a QTV series. Bakit? Lotto winner, 80 million pesos, tapos naputulan ng kuryente a few years later, and his cupboards were empty. Why? We'll find out later. So, automatically, winning or being in possession, whether it's by inheritance, winning the lotto, um, as, you know, I don't believe in luck, but for some reason, it happens to you that you find yourself in possession of such huge amounts of money if you're not prepared. If you don't know how to handle money while money is small, while uh, with the current amount that is given to you, chances are the odds are going to be against you. And they did a study of all these lotto winners internationally. 80 to 85% you know, end up even more in debt after a few years after winning the lotto. Okay. And they're even, they're like suicides, they're all these uh, dramatic stories. Okay. And scripture says in, in Tagalog, uh, I hope we don't have any, uh, is there anyone here who's uh, not a Filipino speaker? Uh, okay, so let's read this together. Kaya kung hindi kayo, committed suicide by jumping in front of a speeding train okay because he got a report from his accountant that from his his net worth of one point something billion dollars 1.1 billion dollars his net worth was down to 500 million dollars and he got so depressed that I'm only worth 500 million dollars how many of you would be depressed if you were only worth 500 million dollars but to him see his mindset was his life consisted of his possessions and his money. His manhood, you know, from being a billion dollar man, he was just half the man he was. And it depressed him so much, enough for him to jump in front of a train. Let's read this together, okay? Oops. As soon as it's on the screen. Okay, we're starting up. I'll read it to you. Uh, King Solomon in, okay, let's read this together. Whoever, Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. And this is what King Solomon said towards the end of his life. King Solomon was one of the wisest, but also one of the most richest men who ever lived. He amassed amazing fortunes. Paul also, as we uh, mentioned earlier, warned Timothy that you know, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Money won't love you back, so don't fall into the trap. We've seen a billionaire commit suicide. It also happens to ordinary people, like this uh, Banco Filipino security guard, okay, depositor. That's this security guard who had deposited his life savings of about 15,000 pesos in Banco Filipino committed suicide after he found out that Banco Filipino shut down. He forgot, or someone forgot to tell him that 15,000 pesos is within the covered PDIC. Diba? It's insured naman. But he didn't know that, and he committed suicide. So guys, uh, remember this, or teach this. I'm sure some of you know this already, that your net worth is not your self-worth. Your net worth is not your self-worth. Don't equate your net worth with your self-worth. And don't look at people the same way that this guy is probably just worth this much and that is his self-worth. 
When you confuse that, you can become, you might not become suicidal, but you can become depressed. So let's see the definition. Let's compare the definition of great wealth to yours. This is God's definition of great wealth. Let's read this together. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can take anything with us when we leave it. Okay, how much can you take with you? Nothing. And what are the two components of great wealth according to the Bible? Number one is? Godliness. Godliness and? Contentment. That's the Bible's definition of great wealth. So if you're after, if that is your you know, um, um, goal also in life, is to be someone of great wealth, there's nothing wrong with that as long as we follow this definition okay, of contentment and godliness. Combine those two, you're a person of great wealth. Amen? So that's why Solomon, in his prayer, prayed this. Let's, let's uh, pray this, or let's, let's pray this together. Let's, let, may this also be our prayer. Let's go. Oh God, oh God, I beg two favors from you before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. So even for King Solomon, his prayer was that, Lord, just, you know, just give me enough for my daily needs. And I'll be happy with that. Because he was afraid that if he became poor, he would end up trying to steal and dishonor his name. And if he was too rich, the opposite would happen. Right? He would start forgetting who the Lord is. And many times, that happens in the face of prosperity. A good pastor, friend of mine, who's also a businessman, told me, you know, Ardi, what I've learned in my life is this. And he said, listen, the real test as a Christian doesn't come in poverty. It comes in prosperity. It's harder. It's harder to, really, to live the Christian life once you prosper. So we need to be careful with that. And so as we uh, start, uh, continue the seminar, we need to really identify what is enough for, for me. And we'll go through a list um, of things or needs. Yung hindi luho, yung mga, like if you go to number six, transportation. Uh, a basic need is not a Mini Cooper. Okay? Or food, diba? Yesterday, my, my Miss Universe wife uh, went, to, <laughs> went to Quezon City and to visit her grandmother, but it was closed, so she was hungry. It was lunchtime, so she went to a Karindiria <laughs> and had a 35 peso lunch. Yung naka-plastic. Tapos walang ano, nagkamay siya. Si, si Miss Universe. Okay. So yun, basic need, diba? We can, we, can, we can be content with that. 35 peso. Anong kinahin mo? Kinisang kalabasa. Eh, Kinisang kalabasa. <laughs> o yun, diba? And what are the other needs, diba? Basta lang, meron tayong pagkain, meron tayong damit na masusuot. We have a home uh, to, to go home to, a uh, roof above our heads. Our children or us, we've... Uh, uh, achieve a certain level of education, uh, we're, we're healthy, we have um, you know, that provision, transportation, communication. And what, what becomes a problem when these certain needs, as we go on in life, progresses into something else. And now our minds, until we get that certain gadget, or until we get that certain position, or until we get that certain dream house, or until we get that certain type of car, that we think is angkop sa, sa status natin, di ba? So what I'd like to ask, uh, I'd like to ask you on page 7 of your workbook is to um, write down the things that honestly, 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 that you tend to worry about, okay? The first few or many that come to mind. 
So we'll give you two minutes again for that. Just don't edit your don't edit yourself. The first things that come to mind. What are the things that you think about most of the time that you think you need? Or you worry about kasi wala pa. Okay, one more minute. Okay, 30 seconds. seconds. Okay, time's up. Hey, so what are the things that we really worry about? Who would like to share? What's on his list, his or her list? What are the things that we really worry about? Yes. <laughs> yes, Louisa. It's um, health and edu my kids' education. Health and kids' education. Marianne, that's what she worries about. What else? Thank you. Uh, what else? Who worries about other things? Yes. Do it, don't tell We have Tini. Um, we worry about daily expenses and the debts. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for your husband? Yes. Yeah. Daily expenses and debts. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dini and Paul. You get the book for that. Oh, who else? Here. Parang we need another, ano? I need, I need another runner. Diyan ka na lang, dito ako. Yes po. Mag-asawa po kayo? Okay kayo. O sige, kayo muna, tapos kayo po. Okay, Miss Edwina. Uh, I want to our house. Equity as in, uh, you want to buy a new house. And then our business. Your business, buti nga kayo, may business pa kayo eh. Si, si Kuya Michael, yan. Yeah. Wala pa eh. Wala naisulat, okay. Kayo naman po, Hindi si Miss Cindy lang. and June. I'll speak also for him, no? So we both agreed that our worry is really to ensure the stability of our children and the, their children's children. No, and also to maintain their spirituality, that they maintain it. No? Thank you so much for sharing that, Miss Cindy and Miss Edwina. Oh, sino pa po? Ito naman. Oh, sige, one there and then one last here. Ah, dito pa, meron pa. Okay, it's good to know what's on your okay. mind. Okay, dito, meron na uh, sasagot. Si Carol and Abed. Good morning. 
Um, I, I know all of us do have a lot of worries, but um, well, for, for us personally, perhaps one item would be, you know, um, retirement fund. Because we all know that, syempre, when one gets older, lalo na when we are lolos and lolas one day, um, that can also be an area of concern. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And dito naman po. It's uh, security on uh, retirement. What's that again? We don't have security during our retirement. So we don't have to depend on our children. Your security you. guard? Se <laughs> <laughs> security on, Ay, upon security. retirement so ah, they don't have security. to depend on their children. Thank you, Pa, Peter, and here? Yes, Ivy and Eric. Okay. <laughs> friends lang kayo. <laughs> Ay, sorry, sorry. Ito pala yung wife mo. I'm sorry, ha. Katabi kasi kayo. Ivy and Mitzi. Oh, your friend. Single kasis. Ay, yung husband mo, hindi ba din ala? Okay lang. Sige, Ivy. So, additionally, I, I, uh, I worry about getting old. I worry about getting more children. <laughs> Shame, Rick. Added cost. And um, constant influx of cash. Constant? Influx of cash. Eric, okay. baka may gusto kang idagdag for you and your wife. Actually, in owning work, um, both Karen and I are corporate professionals. So a lot of corporate slaves, so a lot of pressure from work. Napapaginip, napapanaginipa namin constantly. And work, then, work. and then the household, pag may sira, gaga, ka, ano lang ni Glenda, madaming nasira sa bahay, so dapat paayos. Tapos yung third, yung health. Pati health ng dogs. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Okay. All right. Do you want any more answers? Yeah, no, that's that's. Uh, well, thank you very much for your openness and sharing. Oh. It also reveals a lot. Or baka meron pa siya lang hindi. Meron pang hindi ba na? Hindi pa na sasama dun sa nabanggit na. Meron pa ba? Okay, meron kasi marami tayong i-cover. Ito na lang, last na. Last. Oh, sige na. Okay. <laughs> the wife always has the last say. Uh, we're in the middle of our business venture, so first thing comes to my mind is bankruptcy. Ah, bankruptcy daw kasi they're in the middle of their business venture. Ah, pero hindi pa kayo bank. Hindi, hindi pa kayo bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> hindi pa kayo bankrupt. Hindi, wala naman, ano. Okay, but you're just... Hindi naman kayo nanganganib. You're just... One it's of your just worries his that, worry. You're worried that it might happen. It's not gonna happen. In Jesus' name, it's not gonna happen. No, in Jesus' name. Okay. So business, alright. Okay. So next, you... I'll share with you a verse... Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Let's read this together. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, how many of these things? All. all. Not part or a half or a third, but all. All those things that you listed down. God's promise is that if you, what? Seek, seek first. first. Not Seek these things first, try to, and then seek God after, if there's enough time. Okay? But it says, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And, all. lahat, lahat, all, 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 100% of these things will be given to you as well. Now look at your list again, and let's go to... Um, if you have your Bibles, or I'll just show it on the screen, read Matthew, let's read it together on the screen, chapter 6, verses 31 to 32. The two verses that go, be, uh, that go before Matthew, chapter 6, verse 30, 33, that we just read. And this is the famous verse for worriers, for all of us. And it says, let's read together. So don't worry about saying these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Oh. Alam na ni Papa God yan. Okay. So as an exercise, I want you to just write down this verse on top or below of that list. Okay. As a declaration of faith. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness as yeah. well. Yeah. 
Okay, that will follow after 31 and 32. Is there naman on the top, maybe, 633? Yeah. You know, it's really different when you write things down. When you do your quiet time or you come across a verse and you actually write it down on a journal or a piece of paper. There's something that happens um, when you write down the word. And so that's why I'm asking you to write this down next on top or on the bottom of your list of things that you quote unquote worry about. And it's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. So the, the verse doesn't say, uh, we suggest, we strongly suggest that you don't worry. But if it's really bad, it's okay to worry. But it says, don't worry about these things. That is Jesus talking to you guys. So next one, with your partner uh, or your spouse, I'll give you a minute to discuss discuss. Which of those things that you discussed, that you listed down, um, are not really needs but wants? And take them off the list or just write a line through them. Strike it off. Okay? Why? Because once you discover that hindi pala need to, want lang pala to, because he's promised that he'll provide for all of your needs, not necessarily all of your wants. If you strike off something that's just a want, you have one less thing to worry about. Okay? But of course, if it's something like kids' education and health, your daily expenses, that's not a want, that's a need. Okay? And then after that, If you're still discussing, that's okay. After that, after this uh, seminar, I suggest that when you take this workbook home and then you pray together with your spouse, pray together about the things that are really needs. Because we didn't have enough time, but maybe there are other things that you want to list down that are not yet on this list and go through them together as a couple. Okay? Okay, so that's. Uh, so, itong exercise na needs versus wants, that's your assignment. Okay? pag nyo. So, baka yung ibang sa inyo hindi nasulat. Because I, I also, that's, that's something that I realize that I think is a, is, a, is a need. But like I mentioned, transportation. Okay? And, and I fall into that trap. Thinking that there's something that I really, really need. But it turns out it's a want. And I can just scale down. And it's one thing, one less thing to worry about. Like, for some of us, okay, we want to keep healthy. So I really, really need to be a member of this country club. It's a need. But then, you know, you can just buy a pair of running shoes and just run around your village. And that will equally take care of that need for a healthy lifestyle, for example. Okay? So go down those lists uh, with your spouse later on, okay? Promise, huh? Yes, okay. So, give yourselves a big hand. We just finished session number one. All right. Praise God. And we're now going through um, <clears throat> breakthrough or session number two. According to our schedule, <clears throat> okay, we finish at 10. So, we'll continue with this session and then we'll have a break at 10.30, okay? This will only take 30 minutes, actually, so we're right on time. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so all of you, could we just, uh, uh, could you all stand up where you are right now? Your minds have been stretched, but now let's stretch our bodies as well. Okay, so let's uh, uh, reach for the sky with your right hand and just stretch and say, ooh. Okay, and then stretch all the way, yeah, like that. Ah. And then stretch the other way and say, ah. 
Mm, okay, and then if you're with your wife, give her a hug. And say, mmm. <laughs> okay, and if you're with, uh, don't hug yet if you're, ano, if you're, you just met, okay? <laughs> okay, and then you could uh, uh, face uh, whatever way, face this way, my, my right, and just give like a little nice karate, uh, shiatsu kind of thing, okay? And then face the other way and do the same thing. Okay. Give generously. All right. Okay. And let's sit down. Thank you. Good. Are you having fun? Yes. Yeah. All right. It's so good to do this with your with your spouse. So those who didn't bring your, your better half uh, assignment, you know, please echo this when you get home, okay? Or bring him to the next or her to the next. Uh, <laughs> but what we're going to do right now before we go to the last part about you know, the, the practical application or techniques is that this one also really radically changed my, my view of managing money because my vocabulary before used to be and it's still it's still there I would say always my money <clears throat> or my car or my house or our car or our house okay and hopefully after this session there will be a breakthrough and our vocabulary will change along with our mindset okay so let's go through this session with, and we'll start with the parable of the talents, <clears throat> okay? Or the parable, like I call the parable of three managers. And it's applicable to today. This is based on Matthew chapter 25. And many of you who have uh, been uh, Bible readers will perhaps know this already. But so, but bear with me so that the others who, who need to revisit this will learn as long as I have learned as much, okay? So it's the parable of the talents, and what we're going to, transform it to is the parable or the story of three managers okay based on Matthew 25 and so I'd like to call the first servant as manager A who was given five million pesos I'll call he was given five talents and let's just pretend or think that it was actually worth a lot of money some Bible scholars call one talent as like an equivalent to today's money as a one million dollars okay so manager A received 5 million pesos, manager B received 2 million pesos, and manager C 1 million pesos. So they met the boss, the manager, or the, the CEO of, of the Israel uh, Hebrew Ventures Incorporated, met with these three managers and said, okay, I'm going to give you puhunan, I'm going to give you capital, go and on a business trip, whatever you want to do it, come back in a couple of weeks or months and uh, tell me what you did with it, report. So manager A went out, went on a business trip, went on a trading uh, venture, came back, was so excited because the 5 million pesos capital that he was given, he was able to double. Came back with 5 million in profit. So 5 plus 5 equals 10. So would you be happy with that kind of profit if you were the boss? Yeah. In fact, he said to him, well done. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with five million, with a few things. Now I will put you in charge of many other ventures. Come and share your master's happiness. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. So aside from that, he also got a hug. Okay? So manager B, who was given according to his ability, the, ma the boss said, that maybe this guy, and you know, he still hasn't been with me for that long a time. Maybe I'll give him two million. But he proved faithful. And when he came back, tontowa yung kanyang boss because he came back with the same thing. Okay? So, ganun din na sinabi sa kanya. Well done, good and faithful servant. Okay? But guess what? We know the story. Manager C was given one million. The boss was kind of like hesitant. Oh, sige, maybe I'll give him a chance. I'll give you a million bucks. Maybe let's see. Maybe he'll come back with maybe kahit 10%. Matutuwa ko. But instead, Manager C 
was so fearful. And what did he do? When, the, when he came back, or when actually when the boss reported or checked on him, he said, oh, what did you do with my money? What did you do with the money that was entrusted to you? He said, let's read this, I was and hid your money in the ground. But look, you have what is yours. That's what he did. Okay? Akala niya for safekeeping. What do you think the response of the boss was? Nagalit si bossing. Sabi niya, you wicked and lazy servant. Hindi ka lang wicked, lazy ka pa. You ought to have at least deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So he told his staff to cast, cast this unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. Into the outer darkness. Look at no? I mean, if you come to think about it, maybe, you know, that reaction was kind of OA, di ba? Kasi at least, buo naman yung one million eh. But why did he respond so violently to the point of even casting him into the darkness of that servant? Okay. I submit to you, friends, that we are called to be profitable, not just safe. We are called to be profitable as managers and servants of his money, God's money, if you're given a resource and you don't do anything with it, you put it in a bank account that doesn't earn interest. I mean, today, there are bank banks that don't, don't give you practically zero interest, right? it's just there for safekeeping. You have done the same thing as that servant who was called what? Wicked and lazy. When I came across this and realized that, I started doing accounting of what I have been given. Nakakasala ba ako? Will I be called wicked and lazy? If God looks at me and looks at my statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, and said, oh, what did you do with this? I entrusted you with this capital or with this resource. What did you do with it? What walang kita? And we've all been given time, talent, and treasure. And we will all be accountable to the master who gave and entrusted us. That man was riding on horseback, and he was frantic, and he was calling, Sir John, Sir John, uh, 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 there's a problem. Your house is burning. And then he went, and then he, he was thinking, and he said, no, that's not my house. That's the Lord's house. The Lord's house is burning down. So, it's okay. I have one less thing to worry about, to be responsible for. That's what he said. And it was recorded. And I don't know how many of you have experienced that. Hinasunugan ng bahay. Alam ko si Pastor Jess nasunugan na yan. How many of you have experienced na masunog yung bahay nyo? One, two, three. Um, my family, nasunugan na rin kami. And I received, I remember um, our ancestral house in Bia Paranaque. It was my parents' home. That's where we grew up. My mom was, uh, my parents were still living there, but they were both out. And I remember we were, received a call like three or four in the morning. When you receive a call early in the morning, it's usually not good news, right? So it's either someone has died and I discovered, you know, uh, or has been in an accident or nasunugan ng bahay. And I remember driving my dad to the front of our house and it was still burning and, and uh, we were just looking at the house and I realized, so this is how it's going to be. At the end of the age, everything, the Bible says, everything will go back to ashes. Everything will be burned. You, we can't take anything with us. And, uh, you know, I just felt that. It was just a sense that um, it's, such a, it's, just, it's such a release, you know, a freedom when you have that attitude of, that's not mine anyway, that's the Lord's. It's really, you know, you're not going to worry, you're not going to be stressed out. And so when I was watching the house burn down, I said, okay, that's God's. And, and uh, praise God because at that time, um, my mom and dad were trying to sell that property. And this is a time when there was no water by NBF, ang hirap, to sell it. They were trying to sell it at this price, like over 10 million 
<coughs> or 12 million, but there are no takers. Nung nasunog yung bahay, buti na pa insure nila. Okay? So what happened, just an hour after the house burned down, the neighbor sends his staff or driver, I forget what he was, to our house, and akala namin makihiramay or something, but he goes and says to my mom and dad, Sir, binibenta nyo ba yung lote nyo? <laughs> they had this big mansion beside us, and they had too many cars, they, wala na silang pang ano, uh, space to park, and so they say, we want to buy your lot because so that we can park our cars here. So they paid about uh, uh, close to the purchase price, but with the insurance that came in, you know, they were able to rec not only recover, they made a couple of more million than what, they were, what the selling or asking price was. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, uh, I remember Romans 8.28 right? that says, all things work out for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So it's really just, you know, you live a life stress-free once you really just release everything to the Lord and say, I don't own anything. You know, um, I, I don't do this, but my discipler, Pastor Joby, does this. He doesn't have any of his cars insured. Okay, and he's never gotten into an accident. None of his cars have been stolen. Sabi niya, those are not my cars. Those are the Lord's cars. So if it gets stolen, it's because God wants it to be stolen or, you know, get in. So that's his mindset. Me, I haven't reached that level of faith yet. <laughs> I still have my cars insured. <laughs> okay? And maybe that's why he gets into accidents. Kasi <laughs> sayang insurance money, di ba? Pero hindi, yun. We give it, ah, We've given, ah, we keep because, oh, okay. We give the cars away. Okay. So what's the lesson? Number one, God is the owner of everything. Our money, our families, our property. Number two, if we're faithful in the little things, and you will be entrusted with the bigger things. But if we're tamad and unprofitable, you'll find yourself with nothing. Okay? There will be a block. God honors good stewards and the money you have now is a reflection of your stewardship ability or faithfulness. So nabasa nga natin kanina yung mapagkakatiwalaan sa malit na bagay ay mapagkakatiwalaan din sa malaking bagay. Di ba? In other words, sabi ni Spider-Man, to whom much has been given, much will, Huh? It's a great responsibility. Ah, okay. Yon. Okay. So we're going to do an exercise. Okay? Before we move to the break, we have about five minutes left. And Peter Drucker, ay, sumabog. Peter Drucker said, um, you can't manage, Peter Drucker is a management guru, management guru of the century. He said, you can't manage what you do not measure. So today, we're going to measure a list down the things that have been entrusted to us. So we're going to do an exercise. How many of you have done a salen? Okay. Uh, okay, maybe less than 10% or 15% of the people here. You need this anyway because the BIR someday will ask this from you when you file your taxes. It's actually in law, diba? Right? It's a law now. But I don't know when they're going to implement it. But you will need your salen anyway. But for our purposes, it's not for tax purposes. What we want you to do, what we're going to do, is we're going to list down. It's going to be a statement. A salen is short for statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth. Okay, assets comprise of your cash, uh, properties, etc. Liabilities in your utang. Okay, so assets. Less liabilities is your net worth. Okay? So, yun lang. Exercise nyo. And there are... Luna, bigyan na sila ng handouts. It's here. Ah, it's there na. It's Turn here. to the second to the last page of your workbook. Okay. And there we have the statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth. We will okay. give you about 10 minutes to it's, fill it's, it up. It's uh, two pages long. We don't expect you to complete every single cell in this, Okay. Uh, later on, if you leave your email address with us, I'll give you a number or my email address. 
uh, we will email to you or you can download the link or you can email uh, where you can download this document this Excel file so in order for us to be better stewards we will need to know what has been given to us as stewards diba? make sense so in the next eight minutes list down now okay uh, by memory because I'm sure you don't have your your bank uh, passbook with you or your so nakalista dyan, cash stock investments whatever is applicable to you by memory write it down or later on uh, or just make an estimate okay so list down the assets the liabilities and then uh, take out your smartphones, use it as a calculator, and figure out your, the net worth that has been given to you by the Lord. So actually, Lou, uh, itong exercise na to, you can uh, continue doing because after this, we're going to segue na into the break okay so once you're finished with this how how, how you're going to uh, we have make a sound we have 15 minutes okay so uh we're giving you eight minutes to do this and then you can you can do it as a working break so if you need to go to the not now i want you to focus and then we'll give you the we'll give you the um, uh, the signal when to go but you can continue this during the break. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go on a 15 minute break. Or can we make it 12 minutes? In 12 minutes, come back. So, Lou, the, uh, yeah, there, if you wanna continue in your seats, that's okay. But uh, if you wanna go to the restroom or buy uh, a snack or something, okay, just come back. You can bring your coffee or snacks. May mga bibilin ba sila? No. Actually, we have coffee there at the back. I okay. think we're just brewing it. There's water available also. We also have some snacks there on the small table. So ah, okay. So you don't just, have to go out, all right? Yeah, just feel free to uh, get uh, refreshments there at the back. Um, the restroom at the mall is already open. That's to the left of the stage. We also have one here at the upper room uh, towards your right. And then, um, in preparation for the question and answer portion later, uh, may I just remind everyone, we will have three mics, middle, left, and right aisles. Um, so if you want 
to ask your questions in person, just approach the mic later uh, towards the front of the stage. But we will also be distributing, our ushers will be distributing uh, pieces of paper where you can write your questions. You can drop the questions at, uh, you can drop the sheets of paper at the pink drop box in the registration area. Thank you. Area. Money in marriage at 200 pesos. Paano maging pogi? 100 pesos. Pera na hindi bitin, 50 pesos.